Hi everyone, welcome to my talk on using NeoVim to help develop secure code. My name is Matthew Payne. I'm a principal field security specialist at GitHub. I primarily focus on static code analysis, mainly from a security standpoint, uh, code reviews, automated security testing, uh, dev DevSecOps as well. Um, and today we're gonna to be talking about a plugin that I wrote for NeoVim to help me write secure code and hopefully others as well. Um, so let's start by talking about a bit about the context around security tools. Um, traditionally, these kind of tools have been strapped on to the end of development processes, maybe weeks or even months after you've originally written your code. So this might be some code you wrote, some functionality that you wrote maybe a few months ago, and it turns out that you got a security report at the just today, and it turns out there's a bunch of security issues. Um, this then is a bit jarring for developers to come in and go, okay, where, did, where is this problem? How do I fix this? Why did I write that code that way? All these kinds of questions start bringing up. So we've moved and shift. A lot of this security left is what we call it in the security industry, where we're actually bringing security tools into the hands of developers as soon as possible. Uh, in our case, it might be things like pull requests or merge requests, or it might be things like your IDE. Um, and this really helps shift that process so that as you're developing code, you can be made aware of these kind of security vulnerabilities and, and problems as well. So the areas of interest that I kind of look into when it comes to things like building IDE integrations is around dependency analysis. So looking at the dependencies that you have and seeing whether or not there are security vulnerabilities there. And the second one is static code analysis, but more from a security standpoint. So instead of more like more linting or type checking tools, um, we're actually going to be looking at more security related tools as well. So I'm actually introducing a plugin today that hopefully will be um, public by the when this talk comes out. Um, and actually, this is about bringing security tools into NeoVim. So similar to how we have like LSP servers today that really help like understand our code, um, give us IntelliSense, that kind of stuff. Absolutely fantastic. It's a Lua, Vim, uh, it's a Lua um, NeoVim based plugin. And it's mainly focused around using the open source tools that we may use as developers, maybe you don't, but security people use these tools to really help um, build that security into uh, NeoVim. So let's have a little look at the first area that we wanted to talk about, dependency analysis. We want to actually identify dependencies, but we also want to identify the insecure vulnerabilities uh, that are actually inside our dependencies. I'm sure you've all seen maybe Dependable or some other tool um, being used to actually identify security vulnerabilities. It'll start flagging up in some kind of security tab and you go, oh, what do I need to do? Um, and you may have actually even seen things like NPM audit where you can actually do things like, hey, as you install a dependency with a specific version, turns out there's a vulnerability in there. Um, what I wanted to do is kind of bring this into my IDE. So when I load up something like a package JSON or a cargo toml or a even a requirements.txt or something like this, I wanted to be able to actually see all of the vulnerabilities that are present in my code and actually even automatically fix those vulnerabilities as well. So I've just loaded up my terminal, had tmux set up, um, and I want to go and edit this in my IDE of this project. Um, this is just a JavaScript project, so maybe I'm going to go to my package JSON file, for example. Um, and the really nice thing about this is we have this panel on the right-hand side. This is just for me to show you what that looks like as a summary. I have a few tools set up um, ready to go. It's already validated. These are on the system, etc. Um, and you can kind of see on the left-hand side that we have some kind of like syntax errors when it comes to um, the dependencies in my package JSON file. In our case, we can see that the line for Lodash and the line for this JSON web token packages have both highlighted. Um, what does this mean? It turns out that if we open something like Trouble or we use, I'll look at some of the um, IntelliSense here, we can actually see that, hey, actually in Lodash, there's actually two vulnerabilities that are related. One is around uh, regular expression denial of service and the other one's around command injection. So these are two really like severe vulnerabilities and the same as the web, uh, uh, the JSON web token API as well. And we can see here that, okay, we need to fix these two vulnerabilities. It gives you a bit of context on the right-hand side, uh, just as a quick summary. This is not a by default thing. This is mainly just for me to showcase all the different things in a summary as well. Um, so this is fantastic. We get to see the vulnerabilities. We know they're there. How can I fix this? And this is actually as simple as updating this package JSON. Uh, you may have to do like an NPM install. 
Um, but it's actually running under the hood, just npm audit, just to verify this for us. So if we write to the system, it's there. But one of the things that I love is that if you write devsec uh, inspect fix, what this will actually do is behind the scenes will actually update this pack these packages for you update maybe to sometimes the latest versions etc but it's actually modified this json web token it's modified our um our express um packages our dot uh, low dash packages etc and it's actually make them the more secure versions if you run npm audit now there would be no security vulnerabilities so that really makes it really easy for me to just go ahead fix a security vulnerability the next thing we really want to look at is actually static code analysis. And this is a little bit more complicated. There's a lot more challenges. Um, dependency analysis is really straightforward. You can just look at your package JSON, your TOML files, et cetera, and identify these vulnerabilities really quickly. When it comes to static code analysis, this can actually take a lot longer a time. There are actually some challenges with actually um, around balancing between speed and accuracy. Of course, we want speed because if it takes longer than a few seconds in my IDE, I'm I'm probably gonna not use this thing. Like we always take the, we always joke about the XKCD around like two developers fighting uh, in an office and it's because they're waiting for the compile times. And I know that's a, one thing the Rust community is uh, really hindered with. Um, but we want this feedback right inside our IDE to actually present to the user like as a developer, hey, actually it turns out you've been writing insecure code in my in your application. So what does this look like? So if we go back to our application and load this up in like load up our, for example, index.js, uh, it's just a very small file um, here. Um, and it actually has a bunch of endpoints, just like a little bookstore that I have here. Uh, as a developer, maybe I'm just dynamically building a query using a Postgres database, etc. And it turns out I'm actually identifying multiple security vulnerabilities inside this package or inside this um, project, I should say. And it turns out that actually there's a few vulnerabilities here. Um, there's actually a problem where I actually have this user controllable value coming from, for example, um, a query parameter and actually being used directly inside of like a response. Now, of course, this is not very realistic and things like this, but you can find these sorts of things all the time. So if you are rendering some kind of HTML, um, for example, and you're rendering it straight to the DOM, hopefully we can detect these things using this plugin as well. Um, and there's examples here where, for example, I'm building a, um, a query using, for example, this author query parameter to maybe add a, a where clause or something like this. This is very like simplistic code, but actually maybe this is actually vulnerable to SQL injection. We really, really don't want that as well. So if we, for example, now comment this out, maybe do it the secure way, for example, and rerun this. Every time you save, we want to rerun just to make sure like, okay, have things changed in this example? And you can see here now, this has actually removed these problems here. We've still got this vulnerability that is present in this one, but we've actually remediated this issue. So if we get commit, we add this and then uh, push it, uh, we've now secured our code. So that's kind of like the summary of this tool that I wanted to share uh, with you at NeoVimConf. Uh, hopefully you found it all very interesting. Um, please take a look at the at the, um, the NeoVim plugin. Um, here are some of my socials here as well, uh, my blog, my YouTube channel as well. And I hope you have a, rest, a great rest of your day. Take care.